Good Sunday afternoon, everybody. Come on in. I am rolling, rolling, rolling. I let time get away from me. It's 12, 15. I'm just not starting to cook. And the thing is, the meat that I'm cooking, because I want to do a slow cook. Hope you're having a God-blessed Sunday afternoon. Hope you got something good going, or you might even be going out to eat. I don't know, but y'all know me. I'm in the kitchen, y'all. So, I uh, hope you continue to pray without ceasing since the last time we spoke and that God has blessed you according to his riches and glory and that every desire of your heart has been met according to God's will for your life, that your children are well, prosperous, safe, and just loving life and moving forward as any parent would have them to do. And that all the people around this world throughout these United States that all your heartaches and your pains that the Lord that I know of my salvation has embraced you and that you have allowed him to come into your heart. You do know you have to invite him in. He does, he's not a pushy God that he just pushes his way in. So you have to invite him in. That's the Lord come into my heart. And that was a little song, come into my heart, into my heart to stay. Come into my heart, O oh Lord, today. So we're praying that prayer for each and every one of us, including myself. Lord, come into my heart to stay. Come into my heart, O oh Lord, today. Amen. So let's get this meal going. What you're looking at is some, um, they're, they, well, when I purchase them at the store, they come the double packs. They have, uh, I think, there's four slabs of beef ribs. It's about four pounds of them. And what I've done is, you know how you pull that skin, not skin, but that membrane off the back. You pull the membrane off the back, wash them up real good, and then I cut them into um, riblets. They're calling them riblets, but I call them just beef ribs. That's all they are. Um, I don't know why they call them, because riblets, I usually think about the smaller cut of... Um, small ribs is what I call ribs. They're calling these ribs. And like I said, these were, see, this is what they look like. Beef ribs. Okay. So I have cut them in pieces. I've taken that skin off the back. And as you can see, I've already gone ahead and seasoned them. And the reason I had to do that off camera is because I had to hurry up and do it so I can get this meat in the oven. I want to slow cook. And it's going to take about almost four hours. So I got to get moving. I got to get this dinner going, y'all. So it's afternoon now. Four hours from now to be after four o'clock. So here we go. We're going to get them into the oven. And what I've done, I'm using, uh, what did I say, about four pounds of the ribs. And I had, um, I bought some steaks the other day. And I thought they were ribeyes. I paid the ribeye price. They were called, called uh, beef chuck steaks. They look just like a ribeye. But anyway, I paid $9 for the pack of them. It's two in a pack. And I thought, oh, they got a sale going. So what I did with those, I cut a pack of those up in here. So there's, this is just, some, you know, chunks of meat here on the side. So when you have like a cut of meat that you know is not going to be really, really all that tender, go ahead and, and uh, slow cook it and it'll tenderize it for you. So that's why I've thrown those in with these beef ribs y'all and i have seasoned them with my usual seasonings y'all i put in my uh <clears throat> excuse me complete seasoning onion powder garlic powder uh some smoked paprika this time some black pepper and uh, onion i said onion powder okay and then i've got a mixture of seasoning that i call everything but the kitchen sink i doused them with and i also had some beef bouillon powder sprinkle a little bit of that on there so that's why they look so heavily seasoned i didn't put any extra salt at all then because y'all know every once in a while i do a test kitchen um something so what i did today in my test kitchen i'm testing to see what a1 sauce will taste like not a whole lot i only put about a fourth of a cup on about five pounds of meat and just make sure i marinate it and mix it around in there really good. And I've been letting them sit for about a good hour. So now I'm getting ready to put them in a 300 degree uh, oven. And I'm going to let them cook for maybe, uh, I'm saying three to four hours. Depending on how tender they are when I get ready to take them out. Get these over here to the stove. I got, my, that's my breakfast y'all. See I have not finished my breakfast. This is uh, <clears throat> one of my Eurocast roasting pan so i'm gonna put this is in my Eurocast roasting pan and all i did was go ahead and um 
spray it with, with a little Pam spray just to be a little bit cautious. At this point, I'm not putting any water in here because I don't necessarily want water. We're going to see what juices get pulled out of here as they slow cook. It's why I'm not putting water because I'm confident that they're going to be moist and tender. So I want to put the lid on. <coughs> and somebody else asked me about this. I think I've used this once before, but this is what my Eurocast roasting pan. It can roast, I think, maybe 12 pounds, 12 pound turkey or something like that at a time. So I'm getting ready to put it in a 300 degree oven and we're going to let it cook for about uh, <clears throat> three to three and a half to four hours. And the other thing about this cookware, it helps to tenderize uh, your meat when you cook it. So we're going to let it cook and when it comes out, we're going to tell you about it. Also, I'm going to be doing some vegetables to go along with this. I'll just go ahead and tell you because I'm going to be rolling here today. I'm going to be doing, remember I had those fresh squash and zucchini and cabbage. Well, I still got some of the nice squash cut up in a bag. I'm going to cut up some onions in there and I'm going to put these little baby red potatoes in there and make a big old pan of squash and potato stir fry uh, to go along with this meat. I'm going to also cook some kale and some basmati rice. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and get this meat in the oven. Uh, go ahead and catch up with me. Whatever you're going to cook, let's get started so we can get this food on the table at least about 5-ish, 5 5.30-ish, because we eat late. So y'all got plenty of time to catch up, guys. So hang on, and I'll be back shortly. Okay, y'all, my beef is ready. What I'm going to do is take them out of here and uh, put them into another container. We'll be right with you. That's what I want to do. I want to make just not a gravy gravy, not a thick, heavy gravy. Oh, I hope my pan is going to be big enough. These are so good, y'all. They are so wonderful. I'm just going to, well, since I'm doing rice, I want these to be served over rice. So I need to get them out of here. And then I need, I'm going to make a light gravy, y'all. A light gravy, y'all. And those little extra pieces of meat. Oh, my goodness. You know what? I'm gonna make my gravy right here. I'm gonna use this pan right here. All that goody that's in there. Can y'all see all that goody in there? I'm gonna make a gravy. So I've got the ribs on there, and then I'm gonna get the gravy going. Let's get that heat back on. And we're gonna make us a little gravy. And I'm gonna put just a little bit of flour. Um, just a little bit. Heat that pan up and we'll make a little put a little bit of flour in there. And we're gonna make some light gravy. Should have already had that going. And the other thing that I'm going to be doing is I got my pot for my greens on the back burner. So I will be doing that. And I'm gonna also go ahead and well, I got my the meat cooking for that, so I'm gonna let that cook. cook. Meanwhile, at the OK Corral, I'm gonna hit and heat up my wok for my stir fried vegetables. Okay, so we'll let this get good and hot, and when all this comes together, the dinner will be ready. The last thing I'll do is steam some basmati rice, and we'll be ready for dinner, y'all. Ready, ready, ready. So. Let's get this going. I'll be right back. Okay, y'all, I'm back. I think I'm probably going to use about, I got this oil heated up again, this pan rather heated up. Yeah, maybe a tablespoon of uh, flour. a little something something to go with those ribs so when we eat it with the rice it'll have a little bit of um kind of a glaze like over it sort of press that out and... okay and while i was at the store i purchased 
a onion gravy, a brown gravy mix in them. I'm just gonna put just a little bit of that in there. You know, these gravy mixes have a little flour in them too, so maybe kind of a little gravy packet if you want to use one or not. I mean, it's up to you. And you can put any other seed if you want any other flavor going through that gravy or that little sauce. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Simply pour it in. And so what I'm gonna do right here, right now, I'm gonna go ahead and pour a little water in there. About a half a cup of water. And as you can see, it's making a gravy. And I'm gonna get it down to the consistency that I want. It doesn't need to be a thick gravy. That tastes pretty good, y'all. I'm gonna have to thin it out, so that means I'm gonna have to put more mix in there. So what I'm gonna, it, it's not very salty at all. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna go ahead and put me a little bit more of that mix in there, for flavor, simply because I know I got to add more water, and I, I don't want it to be all thin. And, and then I don't want it all thick and lumpy either. So this will make, so this, this is basically how you make gravy, y'all. I mean, come on. Just gravy from scratch. Some good old hot grease. Put some flour in there, brown it. Season it up, put some water in there, and you got your gravy made. Make it so quick. And this is still thick, much thicker than I want it. And what I'm gonna have to do is just add water until I get it um, thinned out like I want it. And then what I'm gonna also have to do, I'm gonna have to put some of my, uh, I am gonna have to put some of my beef flavored bouillon seasoning in there. Just a, about a half a teaspoon of that. But we gotta keep the flavor going, this is what I'm getting at. Once I put this gravy over, I'm just gonna cover it and I'm just gonna sit it back in a warm oven and let that uh, gravy sort of go through it. And we're gonna have our sauce for our meat. Okay, so I got, now I gotta get this out of the pan. So I'll be right back. Okay, this is why I want this gravy to look, y'all. And I'll tell you one thing, this gravy got me wanting biscuits now because this kind of gravy it tastes like that. It seems like it need a biscuit with it. I'm gonna resist, I'm gonna resist. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna take this gravy and I'm gonna pour it right over top of this meat. And then I'll cover it and just let it sit for a while, okay? Can you see it? Get the rest of my goodie out of that pan. Y'all know I ain't gonna leave that much goodie in there. Okay, so we got, um, uh, gravy out. I'm going to pour the rest out. And what we'll do is just make sure that uh, the gravy gets over all of the meat. <clears throat> and these are just going to be wonderful, y'all. Okay, so that's the meat. Now I'm going to go ahead and get the um, get my veggies. Get 
get some meat from over here and cover it. And of course, like I said, I'm just gonna put it in a warm oven and let it just kind of simmer. Okay, so now we're gonna do the veggie stir fry. blank screen just sitting there okay so here we go got about uh three tablespoons of oil of um okay y'all know what i'm trying to say i'm trying to say olive oil okay these are all my veggies i got them cut up um let's see I got the orange peppers, green peppers, squat, green squash, and then I've got some zucchini. So I'm just gonna start putting them into the pan. And we're just gonna stir fry them just like we did the other day. They were so good. This is all fresh out of the garden. So the only thing that's not so right fresh out of the garden are the green peppers. And the orange peppers, the squash, and the zucchini is right out the garden. And they are, the taste is just so different. Now, I've got my little red potatoes uh, in the microwave. <laughs> you know, I always microwave them. So, you know, just to get a little bit started on cooking. So, when these get just about ready, when my veggies get just about cooked, I'm going to go ahead and start adding my potatoes in. And meanwhile, that's okay to lay off. You gotta get some complete season on about half teaspoon of complete season. Onion and garlic powder. So when we get done, all of this is gonna be mixed in. We're gonna have those uh, potatoes in, but I'm not gonna put the potatoes in just yet, yet. So y'all hang tight when y'all see this again, potatoes again, and everything will be ready to go. This is gonna be a, this is my big wash, y'all. This is my year's head. Somebody asked me about this wash the other day. This is part of my year's past cookware. And it is the large wok without, uh, you know, like the head has just a two little rounder handle like this on the side. It cooks so well. It cooks so well. I, I love, like I told y'all many times before, ever since I've had this cookware, I love cooking it. It does just what I want it to do. It cooks faster. Don't have to put water in most of the time. And I, I have enjoyed it. A little bit pricey, but it's worth it because it does exactly what it says it's going to do. Okay. You let those cook down a little bit. And then I'll add the next thing. I also have some kale. I got me some uh, smoked turkey back there cooking. And I'm gonna put the kale in there. See, I went, I bought, I bought a bag of kale. Um, I mean, it's just convenient. You don't have to do nothing to put it in the screen to it. But I was disappointed. I only had one bag. I'm telling you. I went to that grocery store today and I'm just here to tell you. This, this, that was slim pickings, y'all. All I got to say. Slim pickings. The spices weren't too, too bad. Okay, I'm going to put a teaspoon of uh, garlic powder, teaspoon of onion powder. But the chicken was swimming, y'all. I get a little nervous when the chicken keeps swimming. I'm telling y'all, every day I go, It's a little bit lower, and, and you know, every time I go to the gas station, of course, the price is a little bit higher. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and put in the remainder of the veggies. You know, I've got, still got my uh, potatoes to add in. Another half a teaspoon of uh, complete onion powder, garlic powder. So just season each thing, and I'm going to have to put a little bit more of olive oil in there. 
I got my potatoes into my stir fry. Isn't that looking wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? And it is just about ready. So what I did after I get everything mixed in, make sure everything is seasoned up well, then I'm just going to cover it and let it sit. Turn the heat off though. Don't keep it cooking because we don't want it mushy. And of course, those are my kale greens cooking there. I got a piece of smoked turkey in there with it. So kale greens are just about ready in about another few minutes. Just got to season them up with my uh um, complete seasoning, some uh, onion powder, garlic powder, um, and of course the turkey meat, you know, has a little bit of whatever salt the turkey is. See how that turkey is cooking right off that bone. I'm going to leave it right in there for flavor. So we're going to have that kale, that stir fried uh, squash, zucchini, and red potatoes. Gonna have some rice to go with that good old beef. That beef is falling off the bone, y'all. I just got my gravy together on it. Put it right back into the oven on warm and just let it sit in there. It doesn't need to cook anymore, just to sit in there and let that uh, gravy marinate and just work right through it. And it'll be ready. We'll be ready even about the next hour. So we're gonna cover that back up. I'm gonna go ahead and cover my greens and just let them cook for about another 30 minutes. And this meal is gonna be ready, y'all. I hope you got everything ready that you were planning on cooking this afternoon. Hope everything is going well. And I do hope that you enjoy some of uh, this beautiful weather. Lord, when it's pretty like this, the birds come out singing. And it's just beautiful. Sometimes you can even look around the neighborhood and you'll see a few little kids out trying to enjoy the weather. So let's try to enjoy. I know uh, we've been going through a lot of things with the, at the gas pumps as well as other you know, crime and all that kind of stuff. But let's try to make something good out of the good things that God has given us. You know, even though we have to pay the high prices at the gas pump, I'm just thankful to God that I have money to pay. I mean, come on, because one thing about it with the gas, if you want to drive it, probably you have to pay it no matter what it is. And we're just going to pray, of course, that the gas prices come down. Because I know it's a hardship. I've been there, done that. I don't even like... It's cost me almost $75 now to fill my car when it used to cost me $35. So, I mean, come on. We, we just got to pray that things get better. And, whew, I tell you what, it's a hard pill to swallow, as my mom used to say. A very hard pill to swallow. But if we sit there long enough, it'll slide on down your throat, we'll be all right. And we'll be on to the next phase. So, we pray that everything that the canker worm is eating up and has eaten up in this economy in our home lives and where that God will restore all. And if we are faithful and wait on the Lord and be, don't be anxious, God will restore all those things. But we got to be faithful and continue to pray without ceasing so those good things can come to our lives. So I'm going to cut out right here and I'll be right back. <laughs> 